Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The time has finally arrived. You guys have been asking me day and night, stream after stream, TikTok after TikTok, and I have finally listened. Today, I am giving you guys all of my Kaisa tips and tricks. This here is the Miss Chim Chim Kaisa Guide. This is actually going to be a part of a new series called Frick Challenger because not everybody wants to get the challenger. Maybe you just want to get the goal to get the rewards. So today I'm going to be giving you just that the Kaisa guide for gold players. Like who better to teach you how to get the gold than <laughs> yours truly the hard stuck gold ADC player. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be giving you all of my Kaisa tips and tricks. I hope you guys really enjoy this one. You guys have been asking for this one for a long time. So I'm going to tell you guys what I like to do on Kaisa. But first, lip gloss. All right. So let's go over runes first. We're going to do runes before we get into items. So we're going to go over runes. And guys, I typically use what is offered to me via like some of those apps. I'm not sponsored by any, but what I use is zar.gg, z-a-r.gg. If you want to use it you can use it so it auto imports my runes but if you need to know what runes to use we are doing domination tree you should be starting hail of blades because you're trying to get those autos off asap to proc that passive you want to get your full combo off which we will talk about momentarily taste of blood eyeball collection treasure Hunter. For secondary tree, we're going inspiration. You're going to want that magical footwear and the biscuit delivery. For the rune stats, you're going to want to do offense for the attack speed, offense for adapted force, and then flex for armor. All right, so you may be asking, why magical footwear? Why biscuit delivery? So during laning phase, what I do, okay, before we even continue, guys, this is what I do. I do not claim to be challenger besides when I'm in stream Kiki Kakan. I'm not a challenger player. This is what I do to win my gold games, okay, and pop off. This is my guide. It's not anybody else's guide. This is my guide, what I do, and what works for me. Okay, disclaimer over. Magical footwear because you get more movement speed and the more kills or assists that you get each takedown, you get the boots 45 seconds quicker. With Kaisa, you kind of want to wait till further in the game, till you really get your power. Kaisa is not a level one champion. I'm sorry to break it to you, she's not. It's that late game insurance. Biscuit delivery because you're probably going to be getting poked down during laning phase. Why? Kaisa is a lower range champion. She just is. She's not going to be able to out -poke Caitlyn, Jinx, Tristana. She's just not. You are also going to need to be spamming your abilities sometimes. So you're getting poked down, so you're going to need it for HP, but you're also going to be needing to use your abilities to be farming. You might get pushed under tower and you're going to need that cute. Okay, so that explains the secondary runes. I already explained Halo Blades. You're going to want to get those autos out ASAP. Uh, Taste of Blood, you just want to heal when you do damage. Uh, eyeball Collection, like these are just the better of the runes. If you were doing AP, then I think you would want to go Ultimate Hunter. AP doesn't matter anymore. They nerfed her. Don't really know. This is what you want for AD Kaisa, okay? Now. On to abilities. Do you know what her abilities do? If you don't, I will give you a crash course right now. So for the Q, her Q launches six missiles. That's what you see like attacking the enemy. Her Q launches six miss missiles that split among nearby enemies dealing a certain amount of physical damage. Additional hits on champions or monsters deal 25% damage. Now, Kaisa's ability can evolve and therefore when she evolves that ability, it does more damage because it shoots more missiles. So regular Q shoots six missiles. When it evolves, it shoots 12 missiles. More missiles, more damage. Makes sense, right? What does her W do? Her W is that long shot that when you were playing AP Kaisa, it was doing all the damage. It was sniping house. 
That's what her W is. So Kaisa fires a void blast that deals a certain amount of magic damage. This applies two stacks of plasma and grants true sight of the first enemy hit for a certain amount of seconds. Okay, I need you to really think about that when you're playing Kaisa. Why? Not only does it apply that true sight, so if you need vision, baby, you got it. It's very important for that. But also, it applies two stacks of plasma, not one. The W, if the W applies those two passive stacks and pops the passive it does more damage so if you see that you are about to reach that three damage stack on an enemy you want to use your w last to pop that passive because it does more damage okay so the e the e is she supercharges her void energy she gets movement speed she gets that rush you cannot auto attack when you're e because you're getting that rush of movement speed and then you have that attack speed afterwards so just know that you cannot auto attack when you're eating, but it does give you empower stats. And then auto attacks will reduce the cooldown of the E by 0.5 seconds. That's also very important. So when you're about to go into a fight, you want to E first because you're going to be able to get more autos off. When you're about to go for some plates, you want to E in to that tower, get more autos off. OK, it's all about the autos because that's going to reduce the cooldown and you can use it to escape out. Now, what does her passive do? Kaisa's passive, Kaisa's basic attack stack plasma dealing increased bonus magic damage. So allies and mobilizing effects also stack plasma. So if you see a Leona, if you see a Swain, if you see a Nautilus, they are going to be helping you to build that passive. And why is that important? That means that you can ult in to help your support if they're engaging and you're not in lane yet. You can look for their engage and you might be able to ult into lane. You also always need to be keeping track of how many passive stacks you have on an enemy because you're looking for that W snipe. If you can pop your passive with the W, because remember it applies two stacks, it's going to do more damage. And so you always want to finish your passive stacks if you can with the W. And then what does her ulti do? Her ulti allows her to dash to a nearby enemy if they have a passive stack on them. So that's when the support who immobilizes enemies comes in handy because that means that you don't have to auto them, you don't have to engage, but you can ulti to them and get a shield. Her ulti also gives you a shield. Okay, so how do you want to build Kaisa? Kaisa has a very mandatory build path for the early stages of the game, the way that I play her. I like to play her full AD crit. This is how I build her. Kaisa's power early game comes from her Q and her W. Why does it come from her W? Because it pops the passive. But her main source of damage is her Q. Her Q is so important. So for that reason, since we're we're putting all of our eggs in that basket. Since we're we're giving all of our damage to our Q, we want to evolve that Q as soon as possible. We're going to talk about power spikes uh, after this, but just trust me right now, Kaisa's Q is the power spike. Q evolve is the power spike that you're playing for. Here's how you want to build Kaisa, and this is a mandatory order, okay? You want to do serrated dirt first. Serrated dirt needs to be the first item you purchase. It has two long swords that build into serrated dirk, right? So it's it's kind of cheaper to buy. But why is serrated dirk so important? Serrated dirk is it's better to sit on than even a BF sword. Serrated dirk is so good. I learned that from the boss. So the boss, if you're watching this, I love you. Serrated dirk is such a good item to just sit on, and it will help you get your Q upgrade quicker. So serrated dirk into noon quiver. If you cannot purchase Noon Quiver because you don't have enough money, you can go pickaxe. But you also build two long swords and a dagger into Noon Quiver. So I don't know why you wouldn't have the funds. But that's the order. Serrated Dirt, Noon Quiver, pickaxe. In that order. And of course, your starting item. I have recently been starting long sword with three pots, but that will require you to buy an additional long sword. So if we're Kaisa newbies, Doran's Blade. You will get your Q upgrade once you purchase those items. And then you have your first power spike. Yay! <laughs> After you build those items, it's time to start looking at the enemy team. But let me you tell you kind of the decision making you need to do in terms of mythic choice. I have never in my life built Shield Bow 
on Kaisa. Not a singular time. So we're just going to boop. That one's gone. Now we have Gale Force and we have Kraken Slayer. Which one do you want to build? So you typically want to use the standard mind of thinking for these two items. Kraken Slayer is if the enemy team has two or more tanks and you know that they are going to be who you need to focus. You go Gale Force for when you want to be your your head, you want to be the playmaker. And Gale Force Kaisa is super duper fun. I promise you, you're gonna be boop bop, you're gonna be scooting all over the riff. You've got Gale Force, you've got Flash, and you've got an ulti with a dash. You can go wherever you want to. But for me personally, Kraken is always more practical. It always gets the job done, and it always ensures that I have the damage to slay these tanks that are normally in the game. So Gale Force is more fun. Kraken is more practical. So for me personally, I always build Kraken. If I'm trolling or I want to have fun, I'll go Gale Force. Once you make your decision for which mythic you want to build, you then are looking at how do I get my E upgrade? Sorry for all of the AP Kaisa users. You are not going to be upgrading your W with this build. I am an AD Kaisa player and it's what gets the job done. You will not be upgrading your W. So what you're going to want to do is you build your Kraken or Gale Force. You build your Kraken and then you're going to get your boots, of course, you build them whenever you want to, but you need your boots to get your E upgrade. So Kraken, boots, and then you're going to want to go immediately into Phantom Dancer. You may be asking, Reagan, but wait, what about this serrated dirt? Forget it. Don't sell it. Just forget it's there. It's taking up inventory space. Sorry, sis. You're sitting on it until the end of the game. It just is what it is. Just forget it's even there. Don't build into the collector. Now we're going into Phantom Dancer. So now what do you have in your inventory? You have Serrated Dirk, Boots, Kraken, and Phantom Dancer. That means you have your E upgrade. You now get to go invisible when you E and you get more attack speed, more movement speed. So now what do I build? All right, so let's look at the enemy team. You need to be asking yourself, you need to ask yourself this for every single game that you're playing, whether you're Kaiser or not. So you need to be asking yourself, who is the problem on the enemy team or who is going to be the problem? Who has the kills? Who's going to want to kill you? If you see on the enemy team, there is a 4-0 Mundo because your top lane is inting per usual. If you see a, a Nautilus support and a Udyr jungle, you are going to want to go Lord Dominix third. If you see that they're super, super tanky, you need Lord Doms to even be able to be in the equation, to even play the game. Otherwise, your damage is going to be nothing to them. You're not going to do damage to them. And then you're going to start getting flamed. And nobody wants that, right? So make sure you go Lord Dominix third item if you see the enemy team is tanky. If they're not that tanky, and if there's not really any problems on the enemy team, let's go IE, let's have a little bit of fun. Girls just wanna have fun, right? So if you see a lot of tanks on the enemy team, two or more, sis, all you need is two. All you need is two. When you see two, you better start building them two long swords into that last whisper. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All you need is two, and they're too tanky. After that, I personally, if I see that there's they're tanky, I'm going IE and Blade of the Rune King because I want to make sure that I am able to do damage to them. That is my final build path for Kaisa. That IE and Blade of the Ruin King is situational. Phantom Dancer is really the best zeal item in the game, in my opinion, right now. So I would definitely say you always want to build Phantom Dancer second. Once you have Kraken and Phantom Dancer, you really want to look at your team and the enemy team and assess the game, assess the situation and see what do you need? Does the enemy team have a bunch of magic damage? Sis, you need to get magic resist. Does the enemy team have a bunch of tanks? Need to get that Lord Doms. Does the enemy team have a bunch of AD? Build more AD, sis. Why not? I don't really see the point in building armor. Like, if you got a Zed, they got a Zed, bruh. Just kill them first. But you see what I'm saying? Do you see the line of thinking? You need to look at the enemy team, see what they have, and think to yourself, how do I counter this? Don't go start building full tank items, obviously. What is in the ADC build path that would help me? For example, if, if you see the enemy team has a lot of AP damage, build Hex Drinker. It gives you 
life steal once you have the full item it gives you a magic shield like do you see what i'm saying like you want to think how can i counter them in the most efficient way so let's just say the enemy team is a tanky team we're going up against that mundo udir nautilus team and then you have a standard adc and a standard ap mage in the mid lane so your t your build right now is kraken phantom dancer ldr Again, you can go that IE Bork, you can go IEGA. Just really remember to think through how do I survive the most so that I can do damage and how do I counter the enemy team? So I went on my long rant about runes, items. Let's talk gameplay now. How do you play Kaisa? Now that you have the tools and resources to lock her into game, how do we play her? I play Kaisa kind of the same way I do with every support. So it doesn't really matter if we have a very aggressive support or not. She has a very specific power spike order. Sis, early game or bro. Sis or bro. Early game, you do not want to fight unless you outnumber them or you know for 110% certainty that you can kill them. Let's talk about power spikes and how to use her abilities. So remember how Kaisa's Q shoots multiple missiles, six missiles to be exact, 12 when upgraded. Those missiles go to any nearby enemy. So if there's minions around, it's gonna go to the minions too. If there's an enemy around, it's gonna go to the enemy. If there's multiple enemies around, it's going to go to all of them. So the best way to use her Q, the most damage that you can get out of it is if it's called an ISO Q, which means it only goes onto one person. So how do you get an ISO Q? You want to make sure that that enemy that you are targeting is around no other people. You want to position yourself and in between the enemy so that it only goes on to that enemy. Now that range is something that you'll have to get a feel for, of course, but having the knowledge of, oh, I need to make sure that this Q does the most amount of damage by there being no other enemies around. That knowledge is powerful. So you're gonna start looking out for that, and that means you're gonna start getting more damage off onto the enemy. Gameplay tip number one that's really huge, always try to make sure that the full damage of the Q is going on to one person. How can you use her W most efficiently? You want to make sure you are using that W to pop the passive. It, it applies two stacks. When you see you got three stacks on a hoe, use the W, Pop the passive, more damage done. It's, it's simple. All right, how do you use the E the most efficiently? Remember, auto attacks reduce the cooldown of the E. So if you can use your E in multiple times in one fight, that's great. E to in, E in that hoe. E in that hoe, get you some movement speed, dodge around a little bit, make sure you're autoing. Reduce the cooldown of the E so you can use it again. But you must remember, you cannot auto when you're using the E. So if you got one auto that you need to get off and it's a close fight, you got two HP, they got two HP, don't use your E because you can't auto to finish them off. How do you use her ultimate in a fight? You can use it offensively, meaning you're ulting in. You're, you're sure that you can kill them. You're gonna get that shield. You're gonna ISO Q. You're gonna fire that W to proc the passive and they're gonna be dead or you can use your ulti defensively. You're in a team fight, nobody's there really able to peel for you, or maybe they're trying to peel for you, but they're not doing a great job. Wukong's on you, he's ulting. You ult backwards, you get your shield, you E away. This way, you are ulting defensively, you're shielding yourself, you're peeling yourself because you're getting the Wukong off of you by ulting away. You just wanna peel yourself basically. Kaisa is a great solo queue ADC in my opinion because she can peel herself in that sense. Now let's really get into the gameplay. So early game, you do not wanna be fighting unless you know you can get that ISO Q and that W proc. Those are two really hard things to get done early game. Why is it so hard? Because you have these minions that you can't really even kill early. So as Kaisa, my best tip to you would be to only fight early if you A, know you can kill the enemy with 110% certainty or outnumber them. How do you outnumber them? That means you're getting ganked, sis, go in. But if those two conditions do not apply, sis, please just farm. If you don't, you're gonna set yourself further behind. Farm is going to allow you to have more gold and with that gold, you can buy those items that give you that Q upgrade. Your Q upgrade is the First 
power spike. That is the biggest thing that you are playing for. When you spawn into Summoner's Rift, you are playing for Q Evolve, nothing else. You're not playing for your team. You're not playing for the Nexus. You are playing for Q Evolve, nothing else. How do you get Q Evolve? You farm, get the gold, get the items. Once you got Q Evolve, you better knock them hoes out left and right, okay? Because those missiles, they do damage, especially when you got that ISO Q. Make sure you farm so that you can get your Q Evolve. Once you have your Q Evolve, you're at your first power spike. You officially get to play the game. Okay, so now you have your Q Evolve and now you're building your Phantom Dancer so that you can get your E Evolve. Once you get your E Evolve, you will be able to go invisible. And for that reason, you're able to kind of make riskier plays because you can weave in, weave out. Because once they lose vision of you, you're kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Like they're gonna try and still kill you. Think of like vain invisibility. You get the first say, you get the first punch. You can also use your E for when your Q is on cooldown to kind of like stall. You get out of vision, you're waiting for your Q to come back up. When you come out of invisibility, you Q, you're autoing, you're passive procking, you're Wing. It just goes crazy. All right, I want to show you a clip here of the full Kaisa combo is what I call it. So here's a clip of me doing the full Kaisa combo and I want you guys to watch it so you can replicate it. Anytime I wanna listen to a song, it's going on immediately. Okay, pause. We saw Ash walking alone. That is the big thing. We know that Ash is here alone. Nobody else is around. So I know I am going to be able to A, get that ISO Q off, definitely should probably E in so I can get more autos off and then use the W to finish her off to get more damage. Let's see what happens. Immediately. E, Q, autos, look, look how many stacks are left. There's one in the middle, one right there. She's low, how much damage does it do? Enough to execute. Wow. And that's the full Kaisa combo, period. And let you guys identify exactly what I did. I'm not gonna pause it this time. But remember, I E'd in, I queued, knowing that I could ISO Q. I got my autos in until I needed to W to finish her off. Here we go. Anytime I wanna listen to a song, it's going on immediately. ISO Q, autos, W. Very simple, but it's also something that you'll need to get a feel for. These are all of the tips and tricks, the quick tips and tricks that you guys have been asking for to make sure that I curve stomp and crip walk on the enemy's foreheads. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you thumbs up it, like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what champion you want to see a guide for next. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you don't already, make sure you follow me on my other socials here. I stream every day on Twitch at Miss Chum Chum, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter as Miss Chum Chum, LOL. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and I love you very much. Bye-bye.